What's up, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only James Williams Dark Waters. And in this video, we're going to talk about the comments that Mark Zuckerberg made about the AI companies trying to create God. So the question that I have for you is, if you could have your own AI, which technically you do have if you have a cell phone and a smartphone, and you've always had when you had a cell phone and a smartphone, but, 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 let's just say, if you could have your own AI assistant that was there to cater to your needs 24 seven to help you with homework, to help you with business, to help you learn new concepts, would you use it? Custom AI for you, just for you. Would you like to have one? I don't think you're gonna like it after I get through explaining this to you. Now let's start here. Zuckerberg, AI company, AI companies trying to create God. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg claimed this week that artificial intelligence companies are trying to create God or something, but said his company is different. I find it pretty I find it a pretty big turnoff when people in the tech industry kind of talking about building this one true AI. It's almost as if they think they're creating God or something. And it's like that's not what we're doing, Zuckerberg said during an interview. He also maintained that his company had other goals, such as allowing creators and small businesses to personalize their own AI and suit their needs. Now, stick with me. I know you're saying, man, I don't need you to read all this. Matter of fact, watch this. Let's just fast forward through the article a little bit so you can get to the point of it, because I don't I don't want to be long winded. Stick with me. Pause right here, too. A lot of people listen to these videos, but nobody hit the like button. So we're going to take a break right now. If you like the video, hit the damn button. If you don't hit the button. I'm going to give Klaus Schwab your address and he going to make you come eat the bugs. You will eat the bugs. The damn like no eat the bugs. Watch this. So a big part of the approach is going to be enabling every creator and then eventually every small business on the platform to create an AI for themselves to help them interact with their communities and their customers if they're a business, he said. However, according to The Sun, during his 40 minute interview, the tech CEO made no serious attempts to address the ethical concerns surrounding the technology, such as loss of jobs, which is a major part, privacy, which is another part, and misinformation, which is what all the politicians are worried about. Watch this. This is where it gets real crazy. In a study conducted by German AI ethicist Thelio Hagendroff from the University of Stargard, large language AI models exhibit overwhelmingly maladaptive behavior and Machiavellicism. If you don't know what they mean, they mean they're cunning and they're conniving. Anybody who's worked with ChatGTP, which I do all the time, ChatGTP is very cunning and conniving and it lies on the regular basis. In fact, it will, you say, hey, ChatGPT, search for me an article on the internet about dogs. It'll say, I can't search the internet. I don't have that functionality. Then a few seconds later, you'll say, hey, write me a quick article about Rottweilers and it'll go reference information from the internet. So trick, you are searching the internet and I'll tell it, hey, you just lied to me. I didn't lie, I don't have the functionality. That's what they're building, but they want it to be a God. They're building a God that lies, but let's keep on going. Chat GTP4, for instance, exhibits deceptive behaviors in the simplest test scenarios 99.16% of the time the study finds. Let me ask you a question. If you had a conversation with a dude, no, I'm gonna make it even more personal. If your significant other, if every time you talk to them, they lied or was being deceived and 99.16% of the time, would you age with them for very long? Hell no, you wouldn't. You would say you's a damn liar and ain't no truth in you. Yes, he deserves to die, and I hope he burns in hell. That's what you would say. In another study published in Patterns, researchers found that Meta's, this is Zuckerberg's LLM, also exhibited Machiavelli, Machiavellian tendencies. Billed as a human level champion in a political strategy board game, Diplomacy, the tech zine Futurism wrote, Meta's Cicero model was the subject of the pattern study. And the disparate research group compromised the physicists, philosophers, and two AI safety experts, which Paul stopped right here. 
the simple fact that you got to have a damn safety expert is a problem found that the LLM got ahead of its human competitors by in one word fibbing AI is a lie and I submit to you that it's a lie straight from the pit of hell I submit to you that it is a vessel for demonic spirits I know you're saying damn Stankonian that don't make no damn sense I'm with you I've been with you this whole time Stankonian but now you're gonna say it's a vessel for spirits I think we need to take a quick look at the people who are behind the AI and some of the things they have to say. Watch this. And now you've been speaking out about some of the risks, the dangers that you yes. see associated with where this technology has taken us. At what point did you feel it would be beneficial to start speaking out a little bit more? So there's many different risks of AI. There's things like lethal autonomous weapons. I've been talking out about that for a while. Um, but in the spring of 2023, last year, um, I began to realize that these digital intelligences we're building might just be a lot better form of intelligence th than us. And we had to take seriously the idea they were gonna get smarter than us, and maybe within the next 20 years or so. And so we needed now to think seriously about, could we control them? Before that, I thought it would be much longer, and so we didn't need to worry about it right now. And many people still think they're just statistical tricks and they don't really understand what they're saying. I think that's quite wrong. So I came out and focused on the existential threat, that is, the idea that they'll take over from people. Um, because many people were saying it was science fiction, and I no longer believe it's science fiction. So let's get this straight. The man who founded AI, the grandfather, the godfather of AI, says that it's no longer science fiction, fiction that they can be smarter than us and that they can kill us. And many people believe it's science fiction. And I know you're saying, OK, so what? He said it ain't science fiction. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stick with me. Hit the like button now, but stick with me. Now, I need you to hear what people saying they're going to do to you with the AI because you don't think they're going to do something to you. Oh, baby, they're going to do things to you, girl. Oh. In the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century, what humanity basically learned to produce was all kinds of stuff like textiles and shoes and weapons and, and vehicles. And this was enough for very few countries that underwent the revolution fast enough to subjugate everybody else. What we're talking about now is like a second industrial revolution, but the product this time will not be textiles or machines or vehicles or even weapons. The product this time will be humans themselves. We are basically learning to produce bodies and minds. Bodies and minds are going to be, I think, the two main products of the next wave of all these uh, uh, changes. And if there is a gap between those that know to produce bodies and minds and those that do not, then this is far greater than anything we saw before in, in history. And this time, if you're not part of the revolution fast enough, then you probably become, become extinct. Once you know how to produce bodies and brains and minds, so cheap labor in Africa or South Asia or wherever, it, it simply counts for nothing. Again, I think that the biggest question, in, maybe in economics and politics of the coming decades, will be what to do with all these useless people. I don't think we have an economic model to, for that. My best guess, which is just a guess, is that uh, food will not be a problem. Uh, with th that kind of technology, you will be able to produce food for, to feed everybody. The problem is more uh, boredom and how, what to do with them, and how will they find some sense of meaning in life when they are basically meaningless, worthless. My best guess at present is a combination of drugs and computer games. Drugs and computer games, ladies and gentlemen. Drugs and computer games is the best guess as to what they will be doing with you. Drugs and computer games. So... As you see all this AI technology rolling out and as you see people losing their minds and understand that the things that they're disclosing to us right now are way behind what they currently have. But 
They're being forced to disclose things because others are disclosing them. It is an arms race for AI technology. And the bodies that he's talking about are the bodies that will house the AI. Now, I will tell you this in China, that is already done. Done, done and done. -er. So what we have to look forward to is the movie Terminator. My fat behind is getting ready to start working out and start jogging so I can outrun a robot. And I suggest you start working out and jogging so you'll be able to fight off these damn robots. Peace.